good morning. Sunny skies ahead. Temps in the 60s today and beautiful weather expected for much of the weekend. Coming up, we'll have your forecast plus a look at your carnival outlook. Under the big top, crews prepare for the annual Ball State Carnival. We have a first-hand look at the event this year. Coming up, we have your carnival preview. And year in review, today we say goodbye to our senior members and reflect back on a great year of CWX. Get the coffee ready and open up those eyes. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. From Ball State Unified Media, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather with Nathan, Tanner, Emerson, Katie, and Ballant live from the Ball State Weather Center. And good Friday morning to you. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. I'm Tanner Holbrook. I'm Emerson Lehman. And I'm Katie Parker along with Balance Salivari. Thanks for joining us. And you know, it's supposed to be a pretty nice weekend, guys. Some sunshine. Yeah, Thanks. finally. Sunshine. <laughs> we are happy. We are very happy. Balan has a look at the weather outlook for the weekend. Balan, how you doing? I'm great. Great morning so far. Chilly, though. We do have some freeze warnings in effect across the Ohio River Valley right now. This is in effect until 9 a.m. throughout much of the Ohio River Valley. In terms of our viewing area, just Hendricks County down southeast is under this again in effect until 9 a.m. You might have saw some frost on the windshield as you head on out to work this morning. Currently temperatures starting to work their way on up right at the freezing point. 32 degree power However, calm winds and plenty of sunshine and that sunshine is going to be throughout much of the day. Clear look at radar. Nothing going on and again that's going to be the story throughout much of the day. Plenty of sunshine in store. By lunchtime, 49 degrees, calm winds, and they're working up to the upper 50s by 5 o'clock. Temperatures are going to reach anywhere from the mid 50s to the 60s. I believe due to the sunshine, we'll see we're going to break that 60 degree mark for a great portion of our area. Newcastle 58 today, 56 degrees down in Marion can be expected. In terms of the evening hours, tonight is the carnival here on campus, and really temperatures are looking pretty favorable early on. 55 degrees when gates open at 7 a.m. Again, calm winds. That's going to be the story though, so it's going to allow it to feel much warmer with that that wind chill 41 degrees by the time gate closed. So maybe keep that jacket at hand in case you do run cold. Temperatures are going to continue to drop through the evening hours into the overnight overnight low of 34 degrees. No precipitation in store and really no precip in store until the la latter half of the work week. Showers start to work their way back in on it Tuesday with a 40% chance of rain. However, take a look at the weekend forecast. Beautiful weekend in store 60 degrees by Sunday all the way up to 65 degrees by Monday. So finally, some spring like temperatures in store. I don't know, this might be the first seven day in a long time where I haven't had, had snow in it. So. You had sun in all of the things except like two days. Basically, I it's, know. It's a miracle. Oh. Spring is finally here. Spring yes, has finally sprung. I know. Sprung. Here it comes. There it is. <laughs> all right, Balan, thank you so much. Well, for the first time in 15 months, NASA finally has a permanent administrator. The Senate has confirmed Oklahoma Representative Jim Bridenstine to be the new <coughs> administrator. He won the job just barely after a 50 to 49 vote. Democrats had been strongly opposed to his appointment, largely because of his views on climate change. NASA has been under an acting administrator since former President Obama left office in January 2017. The Bering Sea west of Alaska saw less ice this winter than any other year recorded. An area nearly the size of California in the Bering Sea was covered by ice in February. This is about 150,000 square miles less than normal. Scientists say a combination of global warming and naturally occurring weather patterns were the cause of the ice loss. As a result, increased open water, storm surf, flooded homes and pushed into on ice onto the shore. And as temperatures are slowly beginning to warm up here in Indiana, it may be hard to believe that our world's oceans are actually experiencing heat waves. A new study from Nature Communications suggests that the annual number of days of the ocean experiencing a heat wave has increased by 54 percent since 1925. A marine heat wave occurs when there are at least five consecutive days of unusually high temperatures in a particular region. Jeff Servinghouse, Professor of the Geosciences Research Division at Scripps Institution of Oceanography says that although Indiana is landlocked, we also have an impact in the cycle in increasing temperatures. The atmosphere um, is, mixes completely in a, in a few weeks. And so, I mean, the whole, yeah, the whole, there's no such thing as, uh, as state lines or national boundaries in the atmosphere. The atmosphere mixes. And so you emit CO2 anywhere on the planet and in a few weeks, it, it ends up, you know, make, increasing the CO2 content of the whole atmosphere. 
and some out of this world space news this morning. NASA is celebrating the 28th anniversary of the Hubble telescope with some pretty spectacular images. Take a look at these. The images were taken in February, but scientists released the images for the anniversary. The telescope captured the Lagoon Neb Nebula, which is about 4,000 light years away from Earth. Herschel 36, which is at the center of the image, is 32 times more massive than our own sun. And some more exciting news. Earth Day is Sunday. And this year, NASA has online tools the public can use to explore Earth, view NASA's spacecraft, and help prevent disease. The agency is highlighting many of its innovative technologies to celebrate Earth Day. They will be using the hashtag NASA for Earth to post stories and videos on social media throughout the week. And coming up, a shaky evening just to the north of us. We'll have the details. That's all after your weather now. on your Friday morning. It's 34 degrees outside here in Muncie, but it's time to take a look at weather around the nation. That's right, Tanner. Starting in Colorado, a raging grass fire is forcing families to leave everything behind. Fire officials in El Paso County say the 117 fire has destroyed 23 homes and displaced 16 wow. families. It's horrible. Around 200 firefighters are currently battling the blaze that officials say has grown to more than 40,000 acres. In Oklahoma, the Dewey County Sheriff says at least 50 homes have been destroyed and thousands of acres continue to burn. High winds and dry conditions are fueling the flames and much different concerns to the north. A recent snowstorm in my home state of Wisconsin is not only affecting people, but it's hit the birds hard. The cold grounds have made it difficult for birds to feed themselves. A wildfire sanctuary is asking the community to help their feathered friends survive until conditions outside improve. And developing overnight, a 3.6 magnitude earthquake was recorded last night by the U.S. Geological Society. The quake at centered in Amherstburg, Ontario, which is located in southern Canada, and was also felt in suburban Detroit. While earthquakes of this magnitude are rare, they aren't unheard of for southeast Michigan. And now time for my favorite segment, weather history. On this day back in 1991, a thunderstorm moved into southern Georgia. The storms produced strong winds over 55 miles per hour and hail as large as tennis balls. Winds were so strong that it blew some houses off their foundation. Damages were estimated to be more than $5 million. An estimated $36 million of crops were damaged in the storm. And now Ballon has a look at local weather. That's right, a chilly start to the morning across the state. Temperatures in the lower 30s. You might have even seen some frost on the windshield as you head on out to work this morning. Temperatures across the state, 33 degrees in Shelbyville, 35 in Indianapolis. Lafayette, the cold spot at 27 degrees. Here in Muncie, 32 degrees as you head on out right now. A beautiful sunrise in store, though. Plenty of sunshine right now, and that's going to be the story for much of the day. We do have a freeze warning in effect for um, Randolph County down in the southeast portion of our viewing area. This freeze warning is in effect until 9 a.m. Now, as the day progresses, we're going to see temperatures quickly ramp on up all the way to 54 by 2 p.m. So late lunchtime, favorable conditions might even be able to enjoy that lunch outside. Temperatures are going to work all the way up to the upper six or upper 50s, 58 here in Muncie, 60 degrees in Shelbyville. So the further down south you go, the higher temperatures we will see lower 60s for southern Indiana, 59 the high in Indianapolis. For the overnight hours, temperatures are going to drop down to 34 degrees with partly cloudy conditions. 
the clouds will start to work their way in through the overnight hours and continue on into Saturday. So we're going to see a few hours of sunshine early on in the morning. Then it's become overcast throughout much of the day, and that's going to continue all the way through much of Sunday. So weekend forecast, cloudy on Saturday, high of 55 degrees. Those winds will start to pick up a little bit, but the winds from the south southwest, that's going to allow for some southerly flow to work into the region, bringing warmer temperatures, especially for Sunday, 60 degrees the high on Sunday, partly cloudy conditions. Those winds still sticking around and then a great latter half or excuse me, first half of the seven day forecast, 65 degrees by Monday, a few chances for some showers between Tuesday and Wednesday. So be through the overnight hours carrying on into Wednesday. Temperatures do reflect that as they drop to the upper 50s, 58 degrees for your high on Tuesday. Then temperatures start to work their way back up into the lower 60s by Thursday and Friday and I'm really excited for this weekend forecast. So we're going to toss it over to Liz Sefcheck at the Breaking Down the Science Weather Wall. Liz, what do you have for us? Good morning. I'm joined here by Alicia, Alicia Bernarcha, and we have a very special four-legged guest, Tiny, here to talk to you about flea and tick season. Now, Alicia, all of those cold temperatures are finally starting to go away, and spring-like temperatures are here, and it's time for Tiny to get all of that outside time that he's, she's been missing throughout all of the year. Those long walks are really going to be enjoyed, but here's what to watch out for, fleas and ticks. So across the nation, throughout the year, there are certain regions that are so warm that we see fleas and ticks throughout the entire year. But here in the Midwest, we're split half and half. We're seeing fleas and ticks life cycles between April and December and also between March and December. In Indiana, our fleas, uh, flea and tick life cycle is already well in way. We're sitting in April right now, already a month into our flea and tick life cycle. But did you know, Alicia, that all of these fleas and ticks don't actually die out when we have temperatures below average or any cold seasons? They actually stick with us and they usually hide under leaf piles and debris and they can latch on to Tiny at any time, really. I did not know that, Liz. Yeah. As a dog owner, what do you do in order to make sure that Tiny is protected and all that she needs? So what I do is I do daily flea and tick checks, so searching through the fur, and then I make sure that my lawn is perfectly mowed, so keeping the grass really low prevents um, ticks and flicks, <laughs> tea, <laughs> fleas and ticks. Yeah. Um, from wanting to be in my household, and then protecting my house by using flea and tick um, killing spray is another way that I keep fleas and ticks out of our house and protecting my dogs. Yeah, those are great preventative measures, and then you could even take it a step further by taking your dogs to the vets right around the time that flea and tick season starts to make sure that you're getting all of the preventative medicines that you need throughout the year. That was the breakdown of the science behind flea and tick season. Now we'll turn it back over to the desk. All right, Liz, thanks so much. And coming up, what's trending now? Yeah, that's all after your weather now. Welcome back to Waking Up with Cardinal Weather. Current time is 8.14 in the morning. Freeze watch in effect for a great portion of the Ohio River Valley. This is in effect until 9 a.m. In terms of our viewing area, southeast corner Hendricks County, 
um, has this freeze warning due to some cold overnight temperatures. We saw temperatures push below the freezing point and we're only seeing temperatures start to surpass that really here across much of central India. Currently here in Muncie, 32 degrees with some calm winds. We're going to feel right at 32 degrees. However, a beautiful sunrise in store. We're going to be spoiled with plenty of sunshine throughout much of the day. Clear look at radar. Hardly anything in sight, not even clouds, and that's really going to be the story throughout much of the day. By noontime, 49 degrees, working all the way up to 56 degrees by 5 o'clock. And then in terms of highs today, right around the mid to upper 50s, 56 degrees, the forecast high in Marion, 58 in Newcastle. Now, due to all the sunshine we are going to see throughout much of the day, I think we'll break that 60 degree mark as that sun is going to allow for ample daylight or daytime heating throughout much of the day. Tonight again is the carnival here on campus, so favorable conditions for that. 55 degrees by the time gates open at 7 p.m. Gate closes at 1 a.m. 41 degrees, so have that jacket at hand. I'm going to kick it back to look at weather now, then we'll follow up with trending. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. In on your Friday morning. Thanks for waking up with us. Time for our favorite segment, Trending. Yeah, guys. Big <laughs> weekend in California for music artists and lovers. I'm sure you've been seeing it all over Snapchat like me. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, Coachella is one of the biggest music festivals, not only for music, but also for celebrities and fashionistas sure. around the world. Uh, the first weekend of the festival, this past weekend, uh, brought some amazing and moving performances. Queen Bee, so Beyonce, one of our favorites, of course, of course. had a remarkable <laughs> performance on Saturday that many are still raving about. Some are now referring to this past weekend as Baychella ah, instead of Coachella. She took I over. Know. I, she she took did. over. You know, she's a queen. That's what she does. <laughs> Beyonce released a statement saying, quote, Coachella, thank you for allowing me to be the first black woman to headline. To celebrate, she is donating $100,000 oh, wow. to historically black colleges and universities. How cool is that? Yeah, that's it's very cool. Fantastic, you know, tribute to them and, you know, helping out a lot of people of I'm sure, with the colleges. That's, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Definitely, yeah. And so coming up this weekend, some big name performers include Louis the Child, I know is one Whoa, of your favorites, okay. uh, St. Vincent and Mo. Okay, interesting. I love it. That's going to be nice very lineup. exciting. I know. Wish I, know. I could head out there. Sure <laughs> we have nice weather here, though. Really so quick I guess, I, can't, oh, I, I, guess I can't complain too much. But, I know. <laughs> but anyway, some <laughs> exciting news for all of you DC comic fans watching. Director Kathy Yawn will be in charge of putting together a new movie oh. that Highlights the females of the superhero world. Story I'm very, pretty excited about. Are you a big DC comic fan? Uh, not so much DC comic, but you know, just uh, superheroes in general. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Put a cape and you're happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, the untitled girl gang flick is set to be based on the comic series Birds of Prey. Now, while it hasn't been confirmed whether or not all of the characters will be featured in the new film, creators are certain that Margot Robbie will be playing her role from Suicide Squad oh, Harley Quinn. Interesting. Good movie, by the way. Uh, so many are hoping to see some of their favorites featured like Black Canary, Batgirl, and even The Huntress. Oh, I feel like that's going to be a movie that I'm going to need to go see. I'm all about <laughs> nice this whole to the theater. Uh, yeah. I'm all about this whole girl power. This is awesome. Yeah, it's very exciting for the superhero world, and, and, for, and for they even have a too. woman director too for yeah, the, for this movie. So very like cool. You said girl power. <laughs> All right, and now Nathan Gidley joins us at the weather wall for his first show. Nathan has the national weather look. Hey guys, good morning. Good to be with you here this morning as we look at national weather across the nation. 
We are seeing very cold temperatures across much of the country, especially across the East Coast here. Looking around the East Coast, 32 here in Muncie, 29 degrees that's all in Minneapolis. So very chilly across the East as well as continuing out West, 41 in Denver and 36 up there in Billings. Now with these cold temperatures, we are looking at frost and freeze advisories across much of the east, so that's south of Muncie over to St. Louis. This continues until 9 a.m. this morning, south of Muncie, as well as areas out to the east coast near Washington, D.C. and Raleigh. Then as we head out west toward the desert southwest, we're looking at fire weather conditions down south. We saw some fires over in Oklahoma earlier this week, and those red flag warnings continue for, for the southern part of New Mexico. So with the combination of low humidity and high winds, be very careful when burning any fires out there today. And as we head up toward Denver and the Rocky Mountains area, we are seeing a winter storm warning and that continues on radar right now. Heavy snow coming down across the mountainous areas of Denver. And then the other thing we're looking at is uh, the SPC outlook, just the very low chance of severe weather to the, to the western parts of Texas and eastern New Mexico, just an isolated chance of a strong storm. And we time this out over the next few days, still seeing snow in Denver. And then as we get toward the end of the day on Friday, we are seeing the severe weather start to come in in the, southern, in the parts of Texas. So that's your latest weather. Back to you guys at the desk. All right, Nathan, thank you so much. Tonight is a night that most Ball State students and Muncie locals look forward to every year. That's I know, I sure do. I'm <laughs> very excited. And Sarah Lehman joins us now with all that you can expect from Late Night Carnival. Sarah, good morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah, Late Night Carnival is finally here. Something that I know we all look forward to every single year. It comes once a year towards the end of the spring semester, so it is tonight. Now, Late Night is something that happens every weekend, as you guys know, but it's Saturday. Now, tonight is happening, obviously, tonight, <laughs> Friday. Friday. And it's going to be in the commuter lot um, over in C9 commuter lot. And, you know, there's rides, as you guys can see games, they have carnival food. I know they talked about a food truck, they're having food trucks. So this is something that, um, this is something that, you know, we don't normally get a lot of the time, obviously. We don't have food trucks in Lindsay. Um, so late night event planner, Melissa Padavalli tells us how you can get more out of the carnival. It's happening from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m., but if you pre-register either Thursday or Friday with your student ID, you can get in at 6 o'clock instead of 7, so you can enjoy Carnival an hour early. Yeah, so you guys, you can pre-register today in the atrium or the student center, and like Melissa said, um, you can get in an hour early to enjoy the carnival a little awesome. bit more. Wow. And you mentioned it's from seven to one, to so one. plenty so of time to go out and enjoy the yeah. rides and the festivities. Oh, unless you pre-register, then you can go in at six. Oh. So six to one, time. yeah, more time. Take advantage I, mean, of that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Show. Just go get set up. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. It's gonna be super fun. All right, Sarah. Well, thank you so much. Coming up, we'll take a look back with our year in review. That's after your weather now. Good morning. We're off to a pretty chilly start across our viewing area, but later today we're going to start to warm up.
Currently sitting at 35 degrees in Indianapolis, but in Lafayette, you're feeling a little bit chillier, just in the mid 20s. For currently here in Muncie, we're sitting at 32 degrees right on that freezing mark, but calm winds are accompanying us, not allowing for those temperatures to drive down too much. But with those chilly conditions, we are still under this watch warning, freeze warning in effect until 9 a.m. today, just a half hour or so before that ends. But for the rest of the day today, temperatures driving up to 54 degrees by 2 p.m. And then the, through the remainder of the day today, we are going to see temperatures even higher throughout the rest of the state. And in Indianapolis getting up to 59 degrees and Lafayette also at 59, but down in the south in Bloomington, a little bit warmer at 61 degrees. For the rest of the day, night tonight, you can expect pretty chilly conditions getting down to 34 degrees for Carnival tonight. And partly cloudy skies will be accompanying us throughout the remainder of the night. And those cloudy conditions will stick with us until Saturday. We will be seeing some overcast skies throughout the day, but with this, we aren't going to be seeing too cold of temperatures. We're just going to be staying a little bit warmer. Saturday, sitting at 55 degrees with those cloudy conditions. But then as we move into Sunday, sun, sunshine will start to peak out and we will get to 60 degrees for your end of your Sunday. So kicking off the rest of the seven days, by the end of the weekend, precipitation is following behind and we'll be seeing some slightly cooler conditions as we start to make our way into the rest of the work week on Monday, getting to 65 degrees. Well, I know I'm going to be outside this weekend, to say the least. I'll probably toss a football around or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful for the carnival. going to be so beautiful excited. for the weekend. Yep. I'm so excited. All right, Liz, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, each year waking up with Cardinal Weather is always honored to be able to provide you with Ball State University's only mobile morning show that focuses on science-based storytelling and weather. And today's show with Waking Up with Cardinal Weather is the last of the semester, and each year we strive to take a moment and look back at the past year. Take a look. This year, Waking Up with Cardinal Weather has been all about experimenting. Uh, we've tried a lot of different things, um, you know, just taking, taking some different routes when it came to uh, opening the show, uh, some different segments, adding new people. We brought a whole lot of different people in and we just took chances. Um, my favorite part about this year is basically just how the collaborative effort between, you know, the news side of things and the weather side of things has kind of all come together. Uh, and we're making a really good product. I mean, you can see it on air. Uh, you can see it through the awards we've won this year. Um, and you know, it's just, it's really heartwarming to see something that we've watched growing up from the very beginning to this product that we have now. Um, I think it means growth. Uh, I think it's a really great opportunity for people that aren't sure what they're doing at first to get their stuff in the door and really figure out what they want to do and where they want to go. And that's what it was for me this past semester, and I, I love it. I love every minute of it. Valent, you know, he's, he kills it at the wall. I'm happy he's going to be staying in Indiana so I can still watch him. Um, I've worked with him since my freshman year uh, in some capacity, so it's going to be definitely weird seeing him uh, leave, but uh, I wish him nothing but the best. And uh, Sarah, one of my closest friends, um, what, my, my cousin, like we like to say, but uh, I'll miss her a lot. Um, I know she'll still be around though, so I'm not too concerned, but uh, we'll definitely miss her smiling face every morning. She always brings some sunshine to the show, so. I will miss our production staff. Um, they do so much work to help us look good on camera, and I can't thank them enough for um, all the stuff that they've done. I know um, our two seniors that are here this year uh, have been with us since the very beginning, so um, it's it's been great to kind of build this show with them and kind of develop, you know, this on-air thing that we've kind of developed since it was a baby. Uh, my favorite memory from this year for Waking Up with Cardinal Weather would probably have to be... Okay, so when Tanner and I busted out laughing while Liz was interviewing, um, it wasn't the most professional thing, but I will remember that for very, a very long time because it, I don't know if people notice when they're watching us, but it's so close to happening all the time. All the time, it's so close to happening. And it was like, it was like just a pot. It was just boiling and boiling. And finally it happened and it just spilled everywhere. And um, I still, whenever I'm like having a bad day, I go back and watch that video because it just makes me start laughing even more. So 
Uh, I would probably have to say that was my favorite memory from this year. Um, but, <laughs> I, like the one and most recent memory is when we were on the desk and uh, Liz was talking to us, she was in Iowa, and all of a sudden like it just came back to us and we were just like, uh, <laughs> and we started laughing, it was really funny. Well, I loved re-watching the show and seeing Tanner and Billy laugh during my phone interview. <laughs> I mean, the small staff is fun um, because you know everyone, but I feel like as we grow as a family, as a Cardinal Weather family, that uh, it'll only get better. Well, what a great tribute. And all of our graduating seniors, raise your hand if you're graduating. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a big part uh, of our big team. Big round of applause. Yeah, big, big round of applause. A round of applause to our executive producer, Nathan DeYoung, as well, who has countless big hours to make sure that we can put this show together. Uh, he put that awesome tribute video yes, together, too. Did. So fantastic Very job, Nathan. Honor. It's, it's a tremendous opportunity. Uh, a lot of times as a producer, we don't get the opportunity to be on this side of the camera and be able to share our stories, but it's because of every single one of you here that we can have a product that airs for our audience that's viewing right now. And that's a humbling feeling, and congratulations to everyone on your success and making this product a success. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but we have a nice cake here with our look. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, it's it going is. down. <laughs> well, it almost wasn't a nice day. Right? <laughs> it was almost time to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Said we have a job to clean it up. I know, right? So if any of our graduating members want to kind of tell us what's the future plans, if you want to do that, and the opportunity is yours. Me? All right. Go for it, Balan. I'll take it first. So um, actually yesterday I officially signed my contract. So I will be working at WLFI in Lafayette. I will be um, a multi-platform journalist for three days, and I'll be doing the weekend weather. So excited. Yay. Excited. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So, awesome. um, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you guys. Um, you know, anchors, production, we couldn't have done it without you guys. Joe, thank you for being my filler when I'm not here. Um, and, you know, it's been really amazing to see each one of you guys grow. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing not only where this program goes in the future, but where each one of you guys go. And I'm really looking forward to seeing your guys' journey. So, thank you. And we look forward to following yeah. you as well. <laughs> Thank you. Times. Yeah. Lafayette's getting a good one. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else want to share? Ah. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, for the final time this semester, that's all for Cardinal Weather this morning. That's right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook, like us on Twitter. Have a great Friday and a great summer.